Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education meeting for May the 5th, 2021. Uh, do I have a motion to? Yeah, Mr. President, <clears throat> pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, I move for the board to meet in closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, and removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointed employees over whom this public body has jurisdiction to consider matters that relate to negotiations, to consult with counsel, and to perform an administrative function. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. We'll be back at 6 o'clock. You and I, you know, I have a really great team at the high school. I couldn't do it without my paraprofessionals, and I have great families and great students um, and great administration. Thank you, Mrs. Hudock. <laughs> Congrats, Sam. Thank you so much. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. <laughs> and did we get a picture, Mr. Strait? next recognition is the Spirit Award. And this award goes to Mr. Brian Darling. Mr. Brian Darling from Queen Anne's County High School. Congratulations, Mr. Darling. This is for you. Please stand right here while we read some fabulous things about you. Your print right here is fine. And your principal, Mrs. Hudak, is on the screen as you can see. Mr. Brian Darling, who is the class of 2014 from Queen Anne's County High School, is this month's Spirit Award recipient. As one of our beloved Park D teachers, he enthusiastically and energetically makes a difference each day. All the while, bleeding green and gold, as we can see, and modeling for his students what it truly means to be a lion. In addition to handling the various objectives in the life skills curriculum, Mr. Darling is also the self-appointed healthy lifestyles coach for all the students, often making them or taking them to the stadium to walk, run, and stretch. He truly demonstrates to his students what learning is, and it's more than just book work. The scope of his Lions pride also extends to the football field each year as he coaches Lions football. Go Mighty Lions. Congratulations, Mr. Darling. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
And our next recognition is the Shining Star Award. And this award goes to Miss Amy Krukel. Miss Krukel, come on in. Congratulations. You can stand right here. And this is for you. Okay, thank you very You're much. Welcome. You stand right beside me, right here. Okay. okay. <laughs> and we have Mrs. Hudak on the computer screen. <laughs> Mrs. Thank you so much. Mrs. Krugel is a full-time paraeducator at Queen Anne's County High School, and she is essential to the success of the students in the Special Education Part D program. Her down-to-earth personality, combined with her no-nonsense attitude, uh, makes no challenge unsolvable. Ms. Krugel is always looking for creative ways to enrich the daily lessons and brighten the day of her students. Even in the grips of a pandemic, recipes she prepared for the students became single serve, and she mined for gold to teach elements of the call of the wild. I love that. All made possible by Ms. Krugel, staying up late and taking care of collecting all the materials. And honestly, this isn't even going above and beyond for her. This is the only speed she knows. <laughs> Ms. Krugel is truly an asset to our Park D program, and her dedication and love for our students does not go unnoticed. Well done. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank
Um, this is Teacher Appreciation Week, and as just proven uh, by the two recognitions of the Queen Anne's County High School educators, Queen Anne's County likes to grow our own. This speaks to the wonderful educators of Queen Anne's County Public Schools that put the spark in our students to return to educate the current students. I personally appreciate and recognize all the hard work and ded ded dedication of all of our educators. I don't. Thank you. Um, well, it's belated, but a heartfelt thanks to all our administrative professional staff in Queen Anne's County Public Schools. It was April 22nd, and a special shout out to our very own Jackie Wright. Um, they do such an amazing job for all of us, so thank you for all the administrative staff. I also attended the Queen Anne's County Public School Awards celebration on Friday, April 16th, a great time of recognizing some amazing staff and teachers. And all the finalists for the Teacher of the Year were impressive, um, but since there can only be one, again, um, congratulations to Miss Stephanie McKenzie from Sutlersville Middle School. Um, and good luck for representing us at Maryland's Teacher of the Year. Um, Mark and I finished our tour of the elementary schools with a visit to Mattapeak Elementary. And a quick congratulations to Principal Schreckengoss, who is now Dr. Schreckengoss. She had just um, received her doctorate. And we're now visiting middle schools, and we are enjoying them immensely. Um, I also attended the student art reception hosted by the Ken Island Fine Arts in Stevensville, and we have some amazing talent in our in our arts classes. Um, I can see why we win many awards, so that's pretty much it. Nothing for me, Helen. Pretty much covered me and all that. Uh, I just want to reiterate: it's you know, I want to appreciate our teachers and our support staff and everybody who works for our school system in Queen Anne's County. It's what makes this system what it is and how great it is. So I really appreciate all that. I know this board does, and also the parents and the students that have gone through a difficult year. And um, we're seeing light at under tunnel, so we're hoping that we'll have a good summer and back in school in September. Thank you, Dr. Kane. Absolutely. Happy Teacher Appreciation Day. And that goes for everyone who's involved with instructing our students, educating our students. So our support staff, you received a congratulations. Thank you from me earlier today. But definitely, I just can't say enough how important your role is, especially during these challenging times. Your heart is seen and is felt. And we thank you. I had several meetings, of course, over the month of April, and we'll continue to do so over the month of, of May. We continue to have superintendents meetings for Eastern Shore superintendents as well as state superintendents. We continue to meet uh, with our commissioners each month, and we'll meet again next week. Uh, the tours of the elementary schools, and, and now we're on to middle schools, continue. And, um, of course, we have, uh, you know, just... An outstanding. Well, we did have an outstanding visit with Dr. Salmon as much, uh, this past month as well. But I just want to once again reiterate um, all of the pride and and the appreciation that the exec team and I have for all of our educators. It has just been um, tremendous. The the drive that you show and the dedication that you show. So thank you so very very much. Thank you. Uh, our student board members aren't here this evening. Okay, we'll go by that. Okay, next thing we have, uh, this, is, this is public comment. Mark, do you have? Yeah, sure, thank you. Okay, we ask all speakers to keep in mind the following guidelines. Speakers should sign the roster including their telephone number and address. Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. Questions or statements to the board should relate to a matter of general policy over which the board has authority. Comments about actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comment and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or the board president. If you have a specific question, the board will make sure an appropriate staff member responds to your question. The board respects your desire and right to convey your message freely, but asks as a courtesy to this board and our citizens to show respect for all. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Pass, our first, uh, Kimberly. How are you doing? Could you state your name and address for the record? Kimberly Couch, 605 Duval Road, Stevensville, Maryland, 21666. 
Good evening, board members, Dr. Kane and others. My name is Kimberly Couch. Many of you have probably received my emails. I've sent several. Um, some of you I've had the pleasure of talking with directly at uh, your business or in public. I appreciate your time. This year for my children has been a travesty. My children have not been engaged in online learning. My children have gone from honorable students, straight A students, to straight E students. I know that you hear this from many parents. I know that you share our concerns. Many children have been left behind this year. I'm hoping that we can start out next school year differently. One of the things that I'm here to talk to you about today is helping to engage those students who have been lost this year. There's been an increase in depression and anxiety among students. There have been many students whose grades have been significantly impacted by online schooling. I'm asking you to consider for next year allowing students to start next year with a clean slate for GPA requirements for sports and clubs. This is one of the ways that we can help engage students and bring them back into the schools, get their focus back into academics by knowing that they will not automatically be excluded from sports and from clubs. This is really an important part of students' engagement as well as the learning process for them physically and emotionally. For some students, it's the only motivator for them to be engaged in academics. I feel that this is a very important consideration for our students. I know that you may not be making this decision tonight, However, I want you to keep this in mind over the next weeks, and I hope that you can make a decision before the end of the school year and that you can communicate that decision to students to give them something to look forward to for next year. Our students need the discipline that is offered to them by sports as well as clubs, whether it is drama, engaging in student plays, playing a sport like football in the fall. All of that requires discipline from the students, in addition to discipline for their academics. I'm not asking you for this to supersede or supplant the classes and the academic rigor and requirements for those students, but this is really to complement that and bring some of these lost students back into our schools, back into the mindset of being engaged with academics, as well as bringing them a necessary outlet for their expression of their individuality. Thank you for allowing me the time to speak to you this evening. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Can you state your name and address, even though most of us know you? Pardon me? <laughs> can you state your name and address for the record, even though I think most of us know you? I can do that. Uh, good evening. I'm Richard McNeil, um, president of the uh, retired school personnel uh, group, and uh, just want to make a few comments tonight, if I may. Um, one is, uh, this is uh, Teacher Appreciation Week. Uh, 
want to uh, give a big hearty shout out to all the teachers uh, in the classroom and what they've gone through this year. And uh, not only the teachers, but everybody behind the scenes, the secretary, the custodians, the bus drivers, central office, everybody. Um, it's been one heck of a year and hopefully we can get off to a different start next August. We'll have to see how that is. But um, my heart is still in the classroom um, after all these years and uh, still uh, think about that very much so. Uh, also from our organization, we'd like to uh, add our congratulations to the teacher of the year, Stephanie uh, McKenzie and all the other winners uh, of that. Um, Again, unfortunately, the gala was was here and uh, not the real celebration, but it was a celebration for the talents that uh, we have in this county and greatly appreciated that. Um, from the state, um, just so you know, the, the, um, we have our state uh, meeting uh, for the retired groups uh, next week, and Queen Anne's County is going to be recognized in two areas, and I thought I'd share this tonight. Um, I know it'll go out into the world, but uh, one, um, we are being recognized um, and, uh, for our community service for the year from, from uh, all the agencies in the state. And uh, we, will, we will be presented this next, next Thursday at our, at our Zoom meeting. Congratulations. And, um, uh, I know our, our group has been real busy uh, supporting uh, students and families in the county, even though uh, we haven't been able to get into schools. So and then, uh, the other area that we're going to be recognized on, and uh, this is an area that I appreciate, is um, we are being recognized for the largest numerical increase in our uh, retiree group. Um, you know, everybody works at a job and they all want to stop and do something else. Um, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Um, and one of the things that uh, we do, uh, and appreciate working with the, with the board and um, uh, human resources for the, the retiree group that we can uh, address uh, before they get out into the winds and just disappear. Uh, we are hoping to have a celebration uh, this July uh, when things settle down a little bit. We didn't get to celebrate with retirees last year, but we'll, last year and this year we're hoping to, hoping to do that. And um, I'd like to uh, mention uh, Ava Honeycutt, who is an elementary teacher at, uh, on Kent Island. She's going to be 90 years old on May the 17th. Uh, there's a push to send cards to her. Uh, there's not, they can't have a big celebration, uh, but they are looking forward to uh, that. So if you have a card and you want to drop it off, she would appreciate it. And last but not least, I saw that the county uh, increased the budget by $1. Uh, please spend it wisely. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you have an address for that card that you could give Dr. Kane or somebody? It's an email. We, yeah. we have, yeah, we have we it. Have okay. It's an email. It's, yeah, we got it. it to everybody. I think it's uh, Post Office Box 43, Graysonville. Thank um, you. It was. It's out on social media, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I did not bring that. But I think it's 43. I'll double check. As long as Doc. We, we have it. You have, have it? it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hello, Ruth. How you doing? Good evening, everyone. How are you doing? State your name and uh, address just for the record. Uh, my name is Karen Fields. Uh -huh. I'm president of the Queen Anne County Education Association, and I'm a teacher at Centerville Middle School. So we had visits from board members and Dr. Kane this week. I'm glad that you could see firsthand that students are learning online and in the classroom. I hope you have gained a new appreciation for the work that teachers and staff do every day to support students. If you had come to my classroom, you would have seen us reading the great novel, But Not Buddy, which is about a young African-American boy during the Great Depression in search of his family. It's full of love and loss and redemption, and it's a book that every 11-year-old can relate to. Despite the, di di the divisive social media noise from some quarters, never has there been a closer connection between parents and educators. We have been in their living rooms and they have been in our classrooms for months. There is a mutual appreciation for what we do and what they do to support learning. 
Through this crisis, educators and staff have led by example, wearing masks with ease, even when it's anything but easy, introducing yet another schedule and assuring students that we can make this adjustment, helping students believe in themselves when they feel overwhelmed. One thing we have all mastered is perseverance with an ever increasing amount of patience. Upon reflection, it is abundantly clear we are better when we work together. The joint labor management meeting has been a long-standing <clears throat> initiative of the association and QA superintendents to keep the lines of communication open between administration and members. The QA CEA executive committee has met monthly with Dr. Kane and prior to that with Dr. Williamson. Concerns are addressed and often solutions to problems that affect all staff and our students are found. This long-standing commitment has been even more important and productive through the pandemic. Our next meeting is tomorrow afternoon. We look forward to keeping these crucial meetings in place. Unfortunately, this week has also continued with the exodus of educators, support staff, and coaches from our county. They are leaving because they do not see a better future in Queen Anne's County. Recruitment and retention are major hurdles in ensuring that our students have the best education. People stay when their work is valued. People leave when it is not. It is the hope of QACEA that we reach, that we reach agreements that show so our work is valued and that our future is here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello. Can you state your name and address just for the record? Yep. Kent Lang, L-A-I-N-G, 201 Tillman Neck Road, Centerville. So good evening. Um, I found that the timing of this meeting would be of great irony as it is Teacher Appreciation Week, and I'm here again tonight to express frustration. Frustration of this board and their treatment of our teachers and staff. I've come to the understanding that this board is refusing to even sit down with the teachers union and perform good faith negotiations, and I find that unfathomable. In a year that our teachers have stepped up, kept our education system going in a new environment, styles, and ways not taught in colleges and universities, this board is turning their back on them. No, the last year has not been flawless, but the teachers have actually been amazing examples of greatness throughout. As things were in constant change, they adapted. When they got three days to learn a whole new system, they adapted. When they were asked to do something new, they adapted. Now, when there should be praising and offering of more support and resources to our teachers, this board is elected to play hardball with a take it or leave it attitude towards our teachers. Well, guess what? They're gonna leave it. Highly qualified, passionate people are going to leave this county to other places where they are appreciated as educators, or even worse, they're gonna leave the field altogether. The winter when Queen Anne's County Schools has teacher shortages and retention problems won't be this board, it won't be the teachers, and it surely won't be our students. They are who this board is supposed to work for, our students. It should be to give them every opportunity to turn into pillars of society that make a positive difference in this world. Instead, this board is focused on worrying if racism should be discussed, fighting with our superintendent, and appeasing a minority of squeaky wheels in the county, more than supporting the people who have made education worthwhile for our students. So I'm here to squeak too. I'm not gonna stand by anymore and allow this board to go unchecked with the ridiculous actions seen. To the teachers and staff out there, keep your chins up. Remember, you never joined this profession to appease the school board, but make differences in students' lives, and you are, even if this board fails to recognize that. And to you, Dr. Kane, good luck with your future endeavors in Pittsburgh, and I apologize on behalf of many people in this county that this experience was not more professional and positive for you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all we have signed up, Ms. Bass. Is anybody else out there? No, we'll call and test. Okay, thank you. Our next thing is presentations, um, special ed staffing. Okay. 
I'm sorry, I can't. Are, were you speaking to me? The presentation's not on here. It's just the staffing plan, correct? Oh. That's okay. That's fine. Yep. Good evening, President Hi. Smith, Dr. Kane, board members, members of the executive team. Uh, for the record, my name is Jolene Smith. I'm the supervisor of special education. Um, I do want to just start with wishing all the staff a happy Teacher Appreciation Week. I think you know we would be remiss without saying such on such an important week. Um, I'm presenting to you this evening the special education staffing plan. And just kind of switch gears just a little bit. So the purpose of the staffing plan um, is to kind of meet two prongs. Number one, it's to align with Comar regulations as well as MSDE procedures. The purpose of the staffing plan is to ensure that there is appropriate and adequate personnel and resources available to provide a free and appropriate public education for all students with disabilities in the least restrictive environment. evidence of public input as well as on Appendix A. Um, within this, you're going to see that the staffing plan is based on a review of teacher and related service staff caseloads and schedules. Um, we also take a look at paraeducator schedules and we discuss staffing patterns and trends as well as needs with administrators and staff. We do follow the staffing guidelines that are put out through MSDE, and we also talk with members of the CCAC. Um, and then, you know, we also take into consideration public input at, at the Board of Education meetings. This slide shows um, that federal special education funds are not intended to be used to reduce the level of expenditures from local funds. And as such, there is a requirement uh, to maintain maintenance of effort. And you can see for FY21, um, we were able to do that. And we have consistently been able to do that each year. So we wanna continue that trend. Excuse me, where is that? here in the plan? Um, it is on page uh, four. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So on, and I will tell you which page this is on. Um, this is farther back. There is a table on page 16 where this information is represented um, in a table instead of a bar graph. The bar graph is just, it visually represents the same information. You can see um, based on this table, sorry. We have seen a reduction um, in the total number of students that are represented by special education with a total of 812 this year. Some of those numbers were impacted by COVID, obviously. Um, some students were um, withdrawn because of you know, their wanting to participate at home. Um, we did see a decline in the areas of speech language impairment, as well as other health impairment and specific learning disability. We do anticipate that in the next um, fiscal year that we'll see those numbers kind of re recover as a result of students re-enrolling. We've already seen that. Um, and these numbers are actually based on the October count. So, you know, they've already fluctuated since the October count. We've seen a, an increase since then. Uh, 
patterns and then the number of providers can be found on page four as well as in appendix D. Um, so special education and related services include a variety of different service areas. Uh, the first includes infants and toddlers. It also includes our obligation um, for child find. Uh, we do have an obligation to provide certain services to parentally placed um, students in public and parochial schools. And then we have school-based services, which can include inclusion. Uh, we do have some regional programs that are encompassed within that, as well as our speech therapy services, occupational therapy services, physical therapy services, and then some other uh, services as well. And this chart is not actually in the physical staffing plan. This is kind of a summary of the numbers that are represented all on one slide. Um, you can see in the FY21 contract line that there was a reduction in contracts uh, that was represented in the staff column, which is always a good thing. We're always happy to see that because it does typically result in a greater continuity of care as we do have our staff longer than we have our contracts, obviously. So we, you know, we really are able to build those relationships with families as well as with the students. And, and as a result of that, you see a larger impact. There are additional staff that are not represented in this chart, and those are the ones that I was referring to, such as the teacher for the visually impaired. Um, many of those services are provided through the consortium um, because the, the numbers don't really fluctuate at all because we really always have those services available to us. I did not represent them on the chart. So the next slide is monitoring and evaluation. So special education services are delivered through a continuum of least restrictive environments, and we're always striving to deliver, stu deliver student services in the least restrictive environment. On this particular chart, you can see that over time, we've consistently been right around the same mark. We are starting to see a decline in the column A, which is the participation inside the general education setting, 80% of the time or more. We're still well over the state target um, for that area, and it's really because of the very unique needs that we're starting to see that we're seeing a fluctuation in the percentage. slide represents a description of the continuum of instructional environments um, and you'll see that there are a very kind of defined list of environments that are included but there are many variations on each of these environments um, that are based on student unique needs so while we may have a student participating in inclusion they may also participate in more of a hybrid type setting where uh, they, they're in inclusion for a good portion of the day, but they may participate in one of the regional programs for one part of the day because it's more appropriate for that particular student. We continue to offer parent supports um, through our Partners for Success and our preschool partners uh, liaisons. For our preschool, we have Laura Osterling, and then for our school-based partners for success, we have Jennifer Christian. Uh, they are grant-funded positions that are here at, at the Board of Ed and as well at infants and toddlers, and they are resources that parents can reach out to to kind of lean on as a support, um, ask questions, get more information about the process, et cetera. And then we also have our CCAC president, uh, Tiana Glover, who is responsible for the oversight of the CCAC um, in general. <coughs> Questions, um, and I can hopefully provide you with answers. Well, just long, do you mind sending that um, presentation to us? Of course, um, I will have Ms. Wright. Ms. Ms. Wright has that presentation. Okay, great. Thank She'll you. Make sure it's on board docs if they press it. Ms. Wright is saying that it's in board docs. It was in our board docs. I didn't see it in board docs. I have a different, I have a You have the full staffing plan, yes. um, and Ms. Wright just put the presentation in board docs, so it is there for you. Thank you. So I do have a question. Mm -hmm. um, the paraeducators, and you gave us this nice list of all the, the schools. 
How do you see that impacted for next year? Uh, they're going to be moving people around. I'm sure some students are going to be moving up to other schools. So we account for, or I account for that when I draft this chart. So I go through all of the current enrollments and then I, I list out all the students that require additional adult support or one-to-one. -one. And then I track where they're moving. So most of them, it's a, it's a general kind of feeder pattern. Okay. In some instances, like mm -hmm. for example, Bayside, they could go to Stevensville, they could go to Mattapique. So I'll kind of search where they live and, and put them in the appropriate school. And then we account for that in this, this okay. column. On, t on no, page 20? Yes. Okay, thank you. And then there is, there's also, we account for the level of need. Um, there are some students that may only need that support in, say, reading, um, and then there are others that need it all day long, so we account for that as well. Do we have any kind of idea of how many will be going to um, other programs outside of our district? Do we have that number yet? So um, right now there aren't any changes. We're always striving to um, get ahead of that. Do what's best for the students. Okay. Um, there aren't any changes currently. Okay. Thank you. I have a quick question. The teacher that comes from the Maryland School for the Blind is that an in-kind service? Click on. So that is funded through the consortium. So okay. that's one of the agreements that we have with the Midshore Special Education Consortium. Okay. So that person also takes care of the other four districts? Correct. Okay. And we just get our time when we can? Mm -hmm. Okay. We, um, we actually do deployment during the summer and we mm -hmm. look at all the needs for all four counties and, and then we kind of allocate time based on the needs of the IEP. So we ensure that all the districts get the needs that, they're, that they need. Um, and if that means hiring additional staff, then we have to do that. We do actually have two teachers for the visually impaired through the consortium. Thank you. All right, well, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, take a, it's supposed to go to a break, but everybody's ready to keep going, aren't they? Sure. Please. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but do we need Joe, Ms. Smith to stay here for this Yes, action? that's what Dr. Kane's going to talk to her about real quick. One second. Okay. Because it's an action item, but I don't see it on my paperwork. Huh? It's, it's on here. The you action know, one, item. But I don't, ha I don't. The big plan is on here. Yeah, the big mm -hmm. plan, but the, the action isn't. Well, what exactly we're voting on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And I obviously didn't see the slide presentation until <coughs> the fourth one now. Oh, wow. to the May meeting, next meeting. Uh, human resources, Mrs. Bass. Sir, can we just make a motion to table the special okay. education staffing plan to the work session or the June meeting? To the work session. To the, work session to the May. May 15th work session. Do you have a motion? I have I'm a second. Making, I'm second. making a motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries, thank you. Okay, Mrs. Bass. The next one is to have a human resource and substitute bus drive report uh, that we uh, has been presented to us in, in uh, since it's personnel and closed sessions. Anybody have any questions or? Mr. Mr. Smith, I, I make a motion to accept the HR report as presented in closed sec section, except for the recommended hiring of an executive position. I have a motion. Second. I have a second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor, everybody say aye. 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 Eyes have it 5 0. Okay, transfer requests none. Okay, policies of board approval. Uh, the first one is 6 3 2, promotions retention. For
Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Kane, board members, and executive team. Tonight, I'm Michelle McNeil, Supervisor of Early Learning Title I, Title III, and Migrant. I'm here tonight for the final read and approval of Policy 632 and Regulation 632.1. The last time we had met, there was a comment in regards to defining the satisfactory level on regulation. We met with the committee, and the committee, um, after looking at Comar, changed the statement to satisfactory to completing the academic requirements set forth by the district. That was the only change that we had made, and that was in the regulation, not the policy. Any questions? We had no other, no other comments on that? Okay. No. Okay. Nope. Any board members have any questions on this? Do I have a motion? Make a motion to accept policy number 631, promotion and retention, and the coordinate, uh, coordinating uh, regulation of 632.1. Yes, policy 632. Oh, sorry, 632, and then 6321. Thank you. Second. I have a motion, a uh, first and a second. Any further discussion? All those favor say by aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Ayes have it, 5 0. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, our next uh, thing would be uh, student behavior intervention, uh, policy number 638, regulation 638-1. Good evening. For the record, my name is Jolene Smith, Supervisor of Special Education. I bring before you this evening Policy 638 and Regulation 638.1 for the final read. Since we last met, there have not been any additional comments or changes to the regulation or the policy. Any questions? Board members have any questions at this time? No. Do I have a motion? Motion to accept policy number 638, student behavior interventions and regulation 638.1. Second. I have a motion second. Any further discussion? All those in favor by say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Ayes have it 5 0. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Thanks, Ms. Smith. And equity, uh, education equity uh, 648 and 648. Dash one. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. King, board members, executive team. My name is Matt Evans, Supervisor of Student Services. I'm here for the Queen Anne's County Equity Policy and Equity Regulation, which is number 648 and 648.1. For the third reading, we um, we did the policy committee met on April 21st. There were uh, changes that were recommended by Mr. Burns, and I believe Mrs. Harper was bringing that back to uh, a closed session. We did, and we have a discussion. So I'd make amendment, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm making a motion to amend uh, policy 648, and I'm sending a copy of the proposed amendment uh, to the board members and Dr. Kane at this time. And I guess we can do two things. Um, I'm recommending that we put it out for a second read because there are substantial changes. Uh, as you'll see, or we can keep it for further discussion, I guess, now. I make the, uh, well, I would make the motion that because there are so many changes on this that we extend the second read so that the public has an opportunity to put some more um, input on the revised policy. Okay. But any other, the, the, well, point of order, doesn't he need a second for his motion first? Yeah, but for, probably. <clears throat> second. Let's have a second way of discussion. Do they have a second on this? Second. Okay, second. Okay, we're going to discuss this. Um, you've got the changes, and these, these are what you sent us. Correct. Yes. Everybody should have received it. I have not seen this, so I, I highly recommend this being tabled and sent back out. So, did your motion 
is for these changes, but to go, but to put, put, move it on to a further agenda so the public has time to look at all this. Well, let me clarify. So um, the motion is to amend the policy 648, and I've sent the proposed amendments to each of the board members and Dr. Kane. And that would be my motion. I guess we'd have to rule on that first. It's obviously it's already been seconded. We're in discussion. So there is not a policy 648 just yet because you, the board has not approved a policy 648. So you are making recommendations for changes to the proposed 648. Proposed 648, thank you, yes. That'd be correct. I would, I would think that you would want to put it out for the public. And since we just got it like two minutes ago, I don't think that you I agree with that. So extend the read. Mr. Smith, may I offer something? Right? Yes, Doctor. Please. Uh, Darren. Matt, you okay? Stay in there. Yeah. All right. Uh, for the record, Darren Burns, board attorney, Dr. Kane, thank you for pointing that one piece out. It was important because I heard that twice and I was going to mention that. The other piece I would say is, while obviously when you reference uh, what you're emailing and sharing, that's now, it's part of the public record. I certainly encourage you to post that as soon as you can. It's, it's available for anybody who wants to look at it. Certainly if you pass the motion to extend your second reading period, it'll be out there for people to see. I do think for the record, you may want to summarize, uh, especially since you've said in the public's heard you say it's extended recommended changes to this draft policy you may want to summarize at least I call them the high points or the main points of your changes recognizing that if you pass this motion people will see the rest of it I just think it's good for the record to maybe say what's behind your your, your number of changes and I think you had mentioned sure. you had mentioned in a discussion and, I'm, and I'll share this with that you you thought uh, at one point that it should be closer to the state's regulations I mean that was one of the things I know that was mentioned and I certainly don't there's no legal impediment to that but I, just, yeah, I think certainly. it's good to summarize I'll, I'll stop. okay so let me summarize first of all um, just draw everybody's attention to the one of the purposes I guess the central purpose of having an equity uh, policy aside from conforming with the Maryland State you know Comar the regulations that we have one uh, uh, the, the real purpose of it is to help shrink the gaps achievement gaps in the schools um, among students whether it's the race gap uh, gender gap what have you um, so taking a look at that and seeing what was on the uh, original or the proposed currently proposed policy um, there were a couple of issues the first one is uh, Darren mentioned what we had in our policy goes above and beyond um, what the Comar was recommending. So there were a lot of, uh, well, there were several uh, definitions that are not found in the Comar. So one of the proposed changes is to take those definitions out and rely solely on the definitions that are listed in the Comar. Um, second one is that uh, the policy shall uh, conform with the Comar. So it won't be, uh, there won't, there should not be anything in the policy outside of the Comar, sort of consistent with what I just said. And the purpose statement was uh, changed uh, somewhat, uh, or the purpose, and uh, paragraph two, the, the board statement has been changed. And that pretty much sums it up. There are a lot of uh, minor, uh, changes to it. Uh, almost every paragraph has got some uh, changes, which will be seen when it when it's posted publicly. Well, I, I, based on just that proffer, I certainly concur with Dr. Kane. I think that, and I think this was your ten. I think you should extend your reading period and give the public an opportunity to see what the next version looks like. Certainly. I agree with that. Good. And, and, and just to be clear for the public, the only purpose for the educational equity policy is not to eliminate achievement gaps. It is also to ensure access to programming, ensure that we are uh, treating all of our children, um, giving them an equal opportunity for accessing all programs, and ensure that we are leveling the playing field for those who are disadvantaged. So it is a bit deeper than the achievement gap. So I just want everybody to understand that. And, and while it shall conform with uh, Comar, that does not mean that it only has to say exactly what is in Comar. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to hear this motion again. We've had uh, Mark put in changes, and I think we all are in agreement that this should be out for 30 days uh, so the public can see these major changes. So I have a motion to look at these changes, put them into policy, and I'm paraphrasing, so any member come up when I'm, I'm short, and then we'll put this out for a second read to our next uh, regular meeting, June uh, second. You're, you're amending the proposed policy 648, the policy, not the regulation, because that'll follow later, but you're amending your proposed policy 648 and extending your second read period for those amended, for those changes to be reviewed by the public. And we'll be up for second read for June the second. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. second. Any further discussion? All those in favor by saying aye. 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 Those nay. Ayes have it 5 0. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, let me change that, please. It's four and one abstention. Thank you. I'm sorry. You would let, let, let's do it. Uh, no, no, it's good. I'll do a hand. hand Miss uh, Thing, can you do a roll call by hand? I will. Miss Bennett? Yes, I vote for the extension. <laughs> I'll be clear. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Schifanelli? Yes. Ms. Morissette? Yes. Ms. Harper? Abstain. Sorry, the motion carries four, zero, with one abstain. Now we're into materials, materials instruction, uh, math, Smith. Then we got math, science, and novels. Good evening. How are you doing? Evening, Board Smith. members, Dr. Kane, executive staff. I'm, for the record, I'm Amy Smith, Supervisor of Mathematics K-12 and Gifted and Talented. So we are at a our final review for the mathematics textbook adoption for grades three through five. Um, we did not have any comments um, regarding the textbook review. And so now it's just a matter of that final approval or any questions that you may have regarding the text and the online resource supports for teachers. I have questions of Mr. Smith, if you don't mind. I need to ask Ms. Towers. It says the fiscal impact dollar amount of $276,000 is coming from the capital FY 2021. Is that this current school year? Not next school year. And we have those funds budgeted. Okay, thank you. And this is replacing something that's how old? So we currently actually have no text resources in our kindergarten through fifth grade. Okay. The last time we had text resources was about seven years ago. So we have been working on homegrown materials, um, which is very challenging in supporting students at home as well as in the classroom for planning purposes with, with the teachers. And this contract is for six years? It's for six years. So that's the one-time cost, but really nothing for the next six years in three through five. After six years, what could happen? So after six years, then it would be back up for another review. We would either extend year to year if we chose to stay with the iReady, or we would have to review and go through another adoption process, or we would be in a, in a similar situation that we're at now that we would be without a text resource again. If we extend past six years, do we know what the roughly the yearly cost? Is? I, mean, I mean, I can divide six into two seventy six. It's it's roughly about that. I mean, in six years, there'll be a little bit of a attrition as far as their professional rates as well. I'm sure, but it's roughly about dividing it six years. We are getting a significant discount by going in a six year contract. So, I, I know there's inflation. There's always other things of that nature. If it was three hundred thousand, it'd be, it'd be uh, fifty a year. If it's less, say forty-five thousand. Correct. Year. Ruff, just roughly off just my numbers rough in my head. Correct. So that's roughly what it will be. Correct. And a little higher because of inflation. But then we could renew on a one or two year if we wanted to. Extend. That it is, is extendable. That is correct. If we decided. To. Yes. Sir. It's not something we're going to have to address this large amount in another six years if it's working well. No, that's correct. Mr. Smith, one more question: mm -hmm. Is this a sole source, or was this bid out? 
we went through the, the bid process as okay. far as the textbook review, and um, we had six different companies that placed text in for a review okay. um, that the team went through and then did We some have auditing. that all documented, correct? Yes. Okay, thank I you. have all of the review papers. Thank you. And this is a recommendation of the committee? Yes, ma'am. Any other questions? Do I have a motion? I make the motion to accept iReady Classroom Mathematics textbook, textbook review for grades three, four, five, elementary implement, implementation, uh, fiscal impact $276,454.79 from the capital uh, budget source of capital FY 2021. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. Next on agenda is Mr. Page, science. Good evening, board members, Dr. Kane, executive team. For the record, my name is Michael Page. I am the supervisor of science, environmental literacy, PE and health, and PE and yeah, health. Yeah. There we go. Got them all. All right. Long uh, list. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Today, uh, I am bringing forward uh, a textbook adoption for the EDC Earth Science textbook. Uh, the science department is recommending the funds in order to purchase the Lab Aids, Lab Aids EDC Earth Science textbook and its associated resources to replace the existing textbook. The current textbook is uh, not aligned to our state standards or the next generation science standards and is 16 years old. So today I'm here to um, uh, ask for the approval of that contract. Mr. Page, you just sort of said, same thing she said, but science. <laughs> same thing she said. <laughs> what, um, and I, I know you can't tell, probably give a, not a good answer you can. I would say life expectancy of this program. I mean, used, the last one was 16 years. The world's changing every day now. So new things come out. We looking at a three, five, ten year life expectancy of this this book. So this particular one, uh, you know, we are we are looking at a seven, so the online component of this is seven years. Seven years. Um, we like Mrs. Smith had uh, alluded to. We do try to ex extend those, um, and those are generally year to year. If we do extend those, and so this is for seven years. Yes, sir. The online is online. We're is. purchasing the online and the hard copy. The hard copies are ours when we purchase them. The online stuff is licensed for seven years. Yes. Yes, sir. And then I'm assuming okay, there'll be a nominal charge after that. Yes, if we continue. But there is something that's, I mean, there's something regulated there. Not We're not going to be held hostage for some ungodly amount of money in seven years. So same questions, Ms. Towers. Uh, 105,000 FY 2021, so that's this school year, and we have it budgeted. And it's, uh, again, gone through the bidding process and recommended by the, community, by the committee. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. This is grade levels 10 through 12 I'm reading, or is it 11, just 11th and 12? So uh, this this is the target audience here is going to be 10 and 11, okay. grade 10 and 11. Any further discussion? I have a motion. Mr. Smith, I make the motion to accept the EEDC Earth Science textbook, textbook adoption. Uh, a uh, fiscal impact dollar amount of $105,949.05. Budget source is capital FY 2021. Second. I have a first and a second. Any third discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it 5 0. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. This is passing. Good 
evening, President Smith and board members, Dr. Kane and members of the executive team. For the record, my name is Bridget Passon. I'm the ELA supervisor for grades three through 12. I'm here tonight to ask for your approval on the six novels we'd like to put into our middle school curricula. Uh, the total cost is $19,672.32 from the Striving Readers Comprehensive Literacy Grant uh, year three. Uh, the books went out for public comment the day after the last time that we met. Uh, I have not received any comments uh, on them. Uh, do you need me to read the titles and the authors? Or would you like me to? Uh, I think so. Yeah, because they're all... They're okay. Um, so I'm here tonight to just... It's an action item to ask for your approval. Did a few novels drop off of this from the uh, previous novels we had? Okay. No, they did not. Okay, so... I remember seeing some other ones, but they must have been for the higher grades. We've had, you've dealt with me for three rounds of these, and the okay. first two rounds have gone through, and okay. this is my smallest list. Okay. So we were looking basically at um, six books. Yes. And these are still from the federal grant monies? Yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, I took a look at um, pretty much all the books. Okay. Um, I very much appreciate the crossover and rebound. We discussed that before. Yes. Um, you know, male protagonists. Mm -hmm. um, a decent, I, I looked online and didn't read them, but I, okay. I did review them. They're companion texts. Mm -hmm. so, right. So the, the crossover is the story of twins, and then rebound is the story of the father of the twins. That's right. Um, but crossover we're putting in seventh grade, which is typically read first, and then you go back to the dad's story in eighth grade. Okay, and I saw so you can actually read them either way, but you can. Uh, yes. recommended the way yes. you did it. Yes. So. Prequels will kill you. Yeah. <laughs> Prequel, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I, I don't know about the other board members, but I did have a, just a, an issue with Harbor May, and okay. I'm not so keen on approving that. Um, and here's why. One of the, I guess, main protagonists in that is um, a son of an immigrant whose father's in deportation. Yes. Right. And he's incarcerated awaiting deportation. Eventually, he's deported. Um, it didn't look to me, first of all, there's no quotation marks. A lot of punctuation is missing. I guess it's artistic license. Um, the, the second thing, it's for seventh graders. And I, I'm not sure how much seventh graders actually know about immigration law. And you know I'm coming from an immigration law sure, absolutely. background. And I've worked on the border with Border Patrol um, for several years, actually. And there's issues right now, obviously nationally, that are going on around the border. Uh, there's a lot of dissension, like many other issues, on both sides of mm -hmm. the table. Um, I don't think it's appropriate for kids to just have this emotional uh, read about immigration and you know the potential consequences just just from the perspective of, of one child whose father's in deportation um, now, so you read of, the book pardon? you read the book I read most of it so I, I know there's other stories that are involved in there okay. um, so so I did take it off the shelf okay great I did read it as well okay and you do have the same concerns or the same feelings I do okay okay that's right there. I, I very much enjoyed it. Red crossover. Very much enjoyed it. Right. Um, but it was a, um, yeah, it was a great read. And then, of course, read that the, there was rebound was the prequel. Um, very much liked those. Yes. A song for a whale. I uh, right. that as well. Yes, loved it. Yes. So, yes. That's in our um, animal intelligence unit, and we'll pair it with where the red fern grows. Yes. Mark, so, do you, did, Mr. Chevalier, do you recommend that it is for a higher grade, for like maybe a ninth grader rather than a seventh I would recommend, grader? Well, it, it's written, at, you know, according to the reviews and that sort of thing, it's written for middle school students, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's appropriate for them. Um, so you know, it, it could be promoted for obviously different reasons, sales and that sort of thing. But uh, just um, may I counter argue to before you vote? And that, okay, so uh, Jacqueline Woodson, one of her books is already in Brown Girl Dreaming, is in sixth grade. So Harbor Me is a group of sixth graders, mm -hmm. and the primary, uh, the main character is female protagonist Haley. Um, and she just, now the teacher and me struggled with it because we would never send 
five sixth graders into a room just to talk about their feelings and what they're going through. So when I was reading it, I was like, okay, Bridget, calm down. It's fiction, but let's let's see what's, what, Woodson, what Woodson is showing us. Um, and so each of the characters are going through something. There is there is a Caucasian student whose dad lost his job, and they had to move you know, out of their big palatial home, you know, as you know, again, because you've read it. For, for, for what it does, you know, the, the immigration, it's what he's feeling based on what he saw. And so I don't, I didn't get the sense, nor did the committee, that it gets into the border, nor would we go down that road. Um, I, I think I will po po point out and be frank that, you know, we tend to have those concerns in the northern part of our county. You know, we have kids afraid to come to school or parents afraid to pick up their, ch their children, or so I've heard. So they're, they're already talking about it. They already know it's happening. Um, the things our middle schoolers are dealing with and seeing on the news and hearing at home, it's already out there. So this just puts it in a safe context, again, as a choice. Um, and you know, with your immigration background, I certainly understand where you're coming from. Where I come from as an educator and the committee comes from is it's, it's just a beautiful way to show how all these kids are resilient and they're going through real time current struggles. And, and so I, I, for both sides, and I know you will vote accordingly. You know, if, if, I, if I have to walk away with only five, then, then I will. And, and, you know, maybe I'll come back and try again some other time. But, but. <laughs> and I hope you do. Because um, there are a lot of other uplifting books out there, too, you know, written by minorities, uh, about minorities as protagonists. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Dr. Ben Carson's uh, biography or autobiography of a, you know, young black kid that game, or not game the system, but uh, got through the system and, and, you know, achieved great things in life. So I would like to see personally more books like that that are, give a positive attitude. And, and I've, I've looked at the other books that we bought, you know, um, a lot of them revolve around police brutality and uh, uh, other uh, very pertinent social issues, you know. So, but a lot of it is negative. And, you know, I was looking at Adichie's book, and I read her uh, book, Under a Yellow Sun, uh, okay. about the Biafra secession. So I have nothing against her, but it's, you know, they, they, there's they, a lot of these books have a very negative connotation. I'll be frank as well. However, we're just talking about Such these. is life, right? And it so is, there, there's not always great stories. And I think, you know, police brutality, I, I applaud our police officers, and I adore them, and as do our teachers. And I think what's interesting about uh, All American Boys and The Hate You Give is that there's, there's a black male police officer in both of them who both have conversations with the main characters about what has happened and are asked to check their own bias and their own level of, of, of discrimination, sure. uh, possibly all the way to, the, the, to what extent are, are they racist. And so, again, those are in high school, so, you know, and set in the context, um, you know, when we've done professional development there. But... Again, they are contemporary issues. These are real-time things that our kids are already dealing with and talking about, and we just want to give them an opportunity to do it in a structured educational setting. Right. So while we're on the point, you know, I, I know there's options here, and uh, there are a lot of people that are concerned that you know these these issues, these social issues or political issues. Um, certainly should be taught in school, but, but should be more in a, in a confined uh, setting where there's, um, you know, unbiased teaching on either way, whatever the, Which the current is. issues are, whether it's the border or anything else. Which, and if there's biased teaching going on, that's something that the principal and I will deal with. But yeah, the professional no, development, that, that, is, that is not right. the intent, nor, the, nor, nor will it be tolerated. Right. Uh, um, but it, back to this book in particular, though, um, obviously not only are, are migrant kids or uh, students that are citizens with migrant uh, parents mm -hmm. will be reading it. You know, a lot of people, will, uh, kids will be reading it, I'd assume, if we're going to be spending that much money on it. But If they and their families so choose. That's right. Um, uh, so just the, the fact that, you know, these are seventh graders, um, there's a lot more to immigration. And I don't mean, you know, technically, I mean socially, um, that's on the table. Uh, this pulls on the heartstrings, you know, and uh, and I just think it, it it leans more one way than the other. And, and for that, I, I just can't approve it, at least not at this time. Or, you know, I'll vote accordingly, but I, I'm not uh, too keen on that one. But Thank you for your consideration. Yeah, the other books, giving it a read. Yeah, the other books I heard great things about uh, um, 
Uh, the other ones, I took a little crossover and rebound and, and that kind of thing. So thanks for looking at the the boy male yeah, protagonist. Sure thing. Looking Absolutely. out for him. Um, and I appreciate it. Thank thanks. you. Thanks. Any other discussion? I read Song for a Whale and Rebound. Song for a Whale, Having a Disabled Child. I love that book. Mm -hmm. Very good book. Uh, Rebound, I liked it. I'm just not used to reading in that format, so it was a little yeah, in poetry, yeah, it's going to be a little challenging, but otherwise the book was fine. So those are the two I got a chance to read. Right. I think it's our first uh, deaf character. I don't think we have a deaf character in, in any of our other books. So, And it weaves together science and music, which I think gives us lots of opportunities for cross well, And it spoke a lot not only for her world, but the people around her, mm -hmm. what their world was like. Her so. Parents, her interaction with her parents and testing boundaries, yeah. Yeah. You know, I saw in the classroom one of the visits just last week um, an interpreter with sign language for a student, mm -hmm. oh, second yes. or third grade student. So yes. that was impressive. I, impressive. I guess she was a para teacher, para professional. So anyway. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Um, Mr. Smith, I make a motion to accept all the new novels in the secondary English language arts and English courses, fiscal impact dollar amount of $19,672.32, budget source striving readers comprehensive literally, literacy grant year three. I have a second. Second. For discussion, since we do have, I mean, these books are all going to go either up or down. I don't know if that's really fair if, if some board members have anxiety about one or two. Um, we, I'm, May I speak to my motion? Yes. I'm just, I'm just that's okay. my discussion part. Thank of. you, sir. Um, I think all books are, are excellent, and they bring out people's emotions, their thoughts. That's for families to talk about. It, it, it creates a dialogue, an understanding of whatever everyone is going through, hopefully not just migrant children and their families will be reading this, but all of our students. And this is not Nazi Germany. We get to have books. Oh, that's my yeah, stance. I mean, that, 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 that's not I, I'm not asking for a rhetorical okay, remark. Okay, right, let's keep it's, this level. I, I am. I, that's just my take on it. All right, Thank and you. my take is that I would vote for all five books, and if we don't vote for all of them, or I'm sorry, all five of these six books, and we don't vote for all six, I would move to um, amend it and vote for all except for uh, the one particular book. Well, we have a motion to vote on all a first and a second on all six right at this present time correct are you open for any uh amendment to your motion Mr. no sir no no sir oh wait would that mean that none of my books would get approved well we haven't finished okay. 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 Haven't finished yet <laughs> haven't finished yet <laughs> okay we have a motion discussion on uh, keeping uh all one two three four five six books under one motion to be approved uh mrs ray can you roll call i'm done Morissette? Yes. Harper? Yes. Mr. Chevanelli? No. Mr. Bennett? No. Mr. Smith? No. I have three in the negative and two in the, the, the It f It fails at the current time. What I would suggest is we... Um, at this current time, Mr. Smith, Mr. Chevanelli can make his own motion. Sure. Okay. So, Mr. Smith, uh, I would move to adopt... All of the books except for Harbor Maine. Second. Uh, first, any further discussion? Mrs. Wright, can you do call again? Okay, I will. More set? Yes. Mr. Ms. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Chipinelli? Yes. Harbor? Yes. I'm in Germany. All right. Carries. That's not how they did it in Nazi Germany. <laughs> easy, easy, everybody. Thank you so much, Mrs. Pass. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank, for the Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you, you for too. your time. Okay, the next is 806 CARES Grant. Mm -hmm. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Kane, board members. Tonight we bring before you uh, for approval and acceptance of $3,026,041 from the Elementary and Secondary Relief Fund known as ESSER II. 
as uh, you recall back uh, in budget season, the restricted budget was approved at a certain dollar amount. This has come in here in April and looking for your approval of the acceptance of the grant. Can we clarify, is this the acceptance of this grant or giving the spending authority? Now, this is to extend the restricted budget for this amount to account for this grant. So we, you might recall we did it last year when we yes. got... Um, I remember that we yeah. made a motion and it was for the, to grant the spending authority. That's why I'm, I'm trying to make a clarification if that's what it is. Because we are adding to budget. I just want to make, I just want a clarification, that's all. Because asking for the acceptance of it or the spending authority, I'm just trying to make it understand. I'm wondering if there's a difference. In, in the attachment that you have in front of you is what the initial application was. And this was sent out as far as for SRT requests sent out to all the principals, administrators, and supervisors. The requests were reviewed and prioritized. Um, and that was done in February. Since the uh, award from the state, there was preliminary notification of what would be approved under the grant. So we're looking for the acceptance of the three million 26,041 and looking for spending authority to, to, to go ahead and in this SR2 would fund our summer school, our summer enrichment program. If we accept this, um, can we modify how some of this is spent? That's a question because there was some questions I had about things in, in here, uh, the budget narrative, do we actually need these things? Some of the supplies, some of the uh, PPE, do we have any left over from the past school year? I just, there's just, I had so many questions and I, and I apologize, I'm, I was just seeing this and. Um, can we address any of those for you now? I, that, I, if that's fine, if you don't mind. Or if you want to e email us um, and we can. Okay, Ms. I mean, cause Ms. like the Poland individual. Is forward partitions and the face shields and I just you know don't we have any of that stuff left over is there enough to get through and and, and that's a that's a good question because one thing to be mindful of it's a two-year grant and we don't know where we're going to be next year and if it's going to be needed or not one thing that the grant does allow is actually budget amendments to be done to the grant okay. in case that the need comes up or additional funding is available for other things we're hearing from the governor's office that there could US Treasury has has given them money for summer school. It's only 176, but could we allocate some of that towards this summer? So there's there's definitely going to be opportunities for um, amendments of this grant because of the size of it and because of COVID. The needs are going to definitely it's constantly changing. Because this grant's good through September 23. Correct. I guess I mean just a. If it, if it can be amended and changed because as we've worked through this whole past year, things change on a daily basis. Um, and one question I had is 900 laptops for pre-K and pre -K and K. Mm -hmm. Are those children that age safe, not safe, I mean, I know what my some of my grandkids do to laptops. And when they're in K and pre-K, to have a 300 and some dollar laptop, is that, I mean, that's, what, what we're doing? That has been um, a request from a lot of the schools in addition to our supervisor of technology to get devices into the students' hands early on. Um, and I don't believe it's to be taken home. I believe it's in the school, Dr. Kane, as well. Yes, that, that's correct. Um, however, if we found ourselves in a situation like we did last spring and we needed to send something home, then we could certainly have parents to sign them out. Uh, but there was a big disconnect with the earliest grades, the ones that were requesting these laptops for or these devices for um, in the way we were able to deliver instruction. So basically the pre-K and K necessarily will be in those cabinets where they charge them overnight and just use them each day at school unless like you said something happens where there's a pandemic or something. That is my understanding but I can confirm that with Mr. I just, that, that is correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I saw and uh, individual partitions for $100,000 and teacher plexiglass partitions. 
Things are changing. Do we still need all that? Potentially not. We still have requests coming in from parents, from teachers, from staff that would like to see that extra level of protection. At the same time, we're also starting to see some studies that say they may not be the best thing to use because they're limiting some airflow right in front of you. So we, when we were budgeting for this, looked at the worst case scenario and how we potentially could help to get students back in. Because we may not need all of these or even any of them at some point, we could do an amendment and it would allow us to use that money for other items. Okay. So like we're talking three point three million dollars. This has up to September to 23 to use this. So the next six months or next year is not going to all be used up. There'll still be a lot of that money still where we where it, it, it's staff like based on current and principals can make whoever makes recommendations, Paula. Um, Whoever wants to sit there and make recommendations to change things around because, like you said, sometimes you don't know the burn rate of certain things and what the burn rate of one thing might be different later on. Right, and it's based upon current need. If, if we're not going to stockpile these things and tuck it away, it's what's the most critical need now? What is it that you're seeing? Even though it's in the initial grant application that we have to submit for this funds, mm -hmm. it, is, it is followed up with a question, okay, uh, when the purchase order requisition comes through, uh, is this number what you're seeing current need? Um, so it does um, stretch out for. Um but I'm just, I mean, I think one of the board members mentioned one time that they go to these schools, like these different kind of boards t kids are learning from. Some, t some White schools boards. don't have them. White boards. White boards. You know, if we needed them to keep the distance away so people could sit back farther, that might be something more useful than something in here as we adapt to what's going on. That's my, so it could be constantly looked at by principals and staff to do this on a and rolling basis. Team, correct. And there are initiatives for things like whiteboards and smart boards throughout our capital funding. Uh -huh. I'm just thinking, you know, we, I, I, it may, I just don't want to spend it just because we have it. You know, it, it, it's something we're going to, you know, because, you know, once we get next year, I know we have some more money hopefully coming, but it's it can get eaten up pretty quick if something went south so, or if something doesn't go south. I mean, you know, we're in a new world. This was done in, in January, correct? So needs have changed since then? Yes. Is there any way... Um, that we could table this and send our questions to you. Do we actually need some of these things? I have a lot of questions about the salaries and I can't talk about it in the open session. So if I could send those questions to you, I would I would like to, I don't wanna talk about it. The one thing that I would ask is that since this is for our summer enrichment program, that- um, we Talk about it at the work session? Um, yes, but um, the workbooks do need to be ordered for summer school. There's some summer school needs that are out there currently now as well as some PPE needs. To our summer school. So, so the math workbooks? Correct. So we could make a motion to go ahead and spend that money. Right, um, and the next work session, the 19th, it'll be brought for your review um, for approval for that. For okay. The workbooks, because it and is over the 25. Okay, so that gives us time. And this might be out of it, but our teachers that are teaching this summer, we're, we're, that's, part, that's in this. Yes. Well, funding. Uh, Putting the proposed. And they they're understand that. Okay. It's uh, still with negotiations, though. Understand. Okay. That's why I don't want to go any farther on that question. Okay. But uh, and we should hopefully know more by May nineteenth. Yes. That would be. Yes. Uh, we are waiting on from the state. MSD has their final MOU certification. It's in the hands of the department <coughs> legislator for final approval. We're told by the CFO group yesterday that those certifications should be coming out next week along with our final draft state aid numbers. So we're looking at two things, our state aid numbers, our final numbers on that, and then our uh, certification for maintenance of effort with the county. So can I make a motion to table this until the March 19th work session? Do I have a second? Second. For discussion, you mentioned something that you needed something done for by, is there anything, can do anything you need to do prior to that, Dr. Kane, or to make sure this, we don't, you talked to summer school, some, somebody had to order, what did you say, order something? Uh, 
to, to, to get the summer school planning um, in the process, but as the workbooks are coming on the 19th for approval, though. So, so that needs to be approved. We have time then. Yes. We have time for that? Yes. Thank you. Yes. And there is PPE that we're ordering monthly. There are several types of PPE that we're ordering Coming monthly. out of this? Yes. Okay. So the motion I'm hearing is that we bring this, table this, and ask questions and table it until our work session on 19th. May 19th. I have a first and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. 5 0. Thank you. Contracts for approval. So Mrs. Smith is coming forward for summer math intervention. Mrs. Towers is going to join me again. Yeah. Um, I do need to clarify, there's going to be two uh, summer workbooks, one for the summer school program, and then uh, what Ms. Smith is going to bring uh, forward tonight is for um, the school system as a whole, and yes. that would be um, funded under ESSER 2 proposed. So to this evening, what you have in front of you for an action item is the student workbooks for students K to 8. Every student for the summer would receive a workbook. Those that are going to attend our summer program, that's going to be what we use to help support our curriculum in the classroom. But those workbooks are designed so that students have some extra access points for some of the, the practice skills that are corely focused around their standards this year and to help regain some skills from some of the disconnect in the learning that has occurred over the past year. Um, they come with some little tutorials, some coaching within the book itself, but it'll then allow us a great resource within the summer school setting for the students that attend that. But every student will walk out with one and it takes them a little bit away from the technology world of getting them back into some paper and pencil and some mathematics practice and, and an opportunity for families to use that at home as well. So sole source or has been, has it, been bid out? It's a sole source. the company that we have um, used mm -hmm. for our I recognize it our, our uh, different core content areas in the past and currently was there concern about um, shipping and availability is they are all ready to go once it's approved so we will have them in time for the dismissal of schools at the end of the year as well as for that first group of summer school students that start right on June 12th I believe so we'll have them by June 8th prior, or hopefully, even not yes, June 8th, they, but they, early was, June. Um, I've worked with the company, and they've uh, assured that we should have them in, in here by the end of May if I can process my order within this next week and a half. Okay. If we don't, is there, how do we, I mean. If we don't, we're going to cut it close because a lot of a lot of schools are also working at getting the workbooks to give out to students in different ways. Now, will these workbooks be used next fall when the, or the kids just be, or the students be using them over the summer? This is for summer only. It's for the students, an opportunity for students to have something different than the exact path. And one of the big things that has come to place, particularly in our grade, our elementary grades, is exact path is a great resource and it'll still be available for students to be able to use over the summer but it causes some some challenges for families um, because it is all solely online so they're staring at a screen a lot and sometimes it takes students well past where they should be developmentally so that causes a little bit more frustration these workbooks stay focused within their grade level to keep their skills fresh and for when they come into the fall I'm sorry, just a quick question because I'm not sure I'm clear so so this is using the ESSER to grant money. Is P it, proposed, yes. Right. Um, is it in the proposal for the, where am I seeing that on? Uh, right at the top under supplies. It is uh, in there with the workbooks and reading. Well, I saw that, but it was only 14000 So, So we're going with the... 
it, and the middle math school workbooks. Too, and the middle school too as well. And then we'd like to um, put an amendment in too as well and include Ms. Um, Smith's request and with S or two to do an amendment. So it's or two. so, the so it's not on here. It's not on but here. It, okay. it would, it is, it's my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, that it's a portion of it is because of this all students Right. All so a portion is listed in this, but the other portion is from for the other parts of the SR2 grant. And that's what had me confused at first. Yeah, I'm sorry. To me. <laughs> so you have, you, so we have 825 workbooks at 14,000. Is that part of your? That is the number of students we're planning for within the summer school. Right, and you said this was for summer school. I guess it, maybe I'm not. So there, it's one set of workbooks. Those students that come to summer school, they will use those workbooks. So they'll get direct instruction with a teacher. For everyone else, they will get a workbook to take home so that they have something to practice skills okay. and so, some teaching resources. Okay, so this 45000 that you want to use as your funds for is not in this $3 million request a, a here. A portion of it is, yes. Okay. Okay. And then how many books will this 45,000? It will it, it will buy um, every student at each grade level full from kindergarten to eighth grade a text resource. So it's basically 650 students per grade level. So we could pull out those two line items there. We wouldn't need those in, in the $3 million request if you're getting if we approve the 45,000, correct? Well, this is part of that grant. They're just, they're just asking for to spend this and money. And they're also using money. Well, no, I understand that, summer. but it's not all in here. So it's, I don't, if it, there's only a portion accounted for in the 3 million, yes. you're asking for more than what's in here for this piece. Well, we're gonna have to do a budget amendment okay. to include the, the full amount, correct? Okay. I have a question. Can we vote on this since we tabled CARES 2 for next work session? So this gets tabled as well? I would think so. Oh, I, you don't think, I mean, we, we table CARES too, but this is a separate it, item. Right. This, is, this is the same funding. This is ESSER 2 funding. Is there any but, money left over from the previous ESSER grants? It's all gone. No, it, the last of it was spent with um, Exact Path. With Exact Path. But some of that is not listed. <clears throat> it does seem as if we could vote what's not in here. Could we not? Is that Dr. Kane, do you know? You you tabled the entire ESSER allocation. Right, but some of this is okay. okay. Do we want to revisit that? <clears throat> and uh, like Tammy suggested the first time, Ms. Harper? Um, either what, withdraw your motion and then we vote to approve the workbooks and... We got a, a second one coming for uh, another one right behind that. That's our two money. We, we withdraw I mean, your motion and then we pass on on voting on the ESSER until we're done with this and then bring the ESSER back and, and table what we didn't, like line item approve. out there how do we do this with a with an with amendment do we do an amendment or do a second motion uh, because I see now that we have two other two other items coming up for s or two funding mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all right. To, to back up a second, Darren, uh, Darren Burns, board attorney. Rem remember that as a parliamentary fundamental, right? If there's a proposed action item that comes before the board, and a prime, a prime, what they call a primary motion is made, right? That that primary motion is now the board's motion if it's second. The next thing that happens is, is discussion. If in that discussion, a sec, what they call a secondary motion is made, which is a motion to, right? If that happens. That has to be dealt with first. If that passes, that changes the board's motion that was pending. Okay, well, that's not what this is. I understand that. Okay. My, my point of saying that is start with clarifying what it is that somebody wants to move. Always for the record, restate what you're trying to do. 
to get back to your question is, I'm not so sure right this minute it's clear where you guys are with what you're trying to do. So I'm just suggesting that you state more clearly if any board member has something they want to achieve, <coughs> state exactly the motion. Because if the superintendent makes a recommendation, your act is to act on the recommendation. That's the next step. And if you start parsing all this, the way it's starting to go, I think you're losing your record on it a little bit. And I, I'm just making that recommendation to go by step, reorient yourselves so you can get to your parliamentary process. Okay, so moving forward, uh, looking forward also to the other two items that are part of the S or two, they do not need to be done right away. I mean, we will be hopefully, all, all things considered, Chesapeake speech and the Soylent contract can easily wait until the May 19th. That's a question. Oh, you're that's a question staff. I'm asking now. Right. What is the problem? Is the time of the essence for the workbooks being here by the time school is over? Correct. Since we had a motion during this meeting, we can amend that motion. What's the motion on board right now? There's no motion at the moment. Okay. The previous motion was to table the S or two. Uh, for further discussion at the work session. All right. That doesn't preclude us from spending some of it now no. to facilitate this. That's what I was going to get to. That motion passed, right? We just amended to say that we are granting through the ESSER II grant fund the workbooks because time is of the essence. Again, your motion to table passed, right? Yes. Right. right. So, so now you're talking. You, you can't amend. A, you can't amend a past motion. Correct. That's done. Okay. You can revisit an action that you took. If you're in the same meeting, it's considered a reconsideration. Um, if you're in the next meeting, it's a rescission. If you're trying to rescind what you did, if what you're trying to do <laughs> is do something different from what you did, in this case, you actually put it off, right? then I suggest that you formulate your motion on a very specific item that doesn't interfere with the fact you just set your tabling thing. Okay. You told the, I got told it. The public you're going I got out. it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. We currently have a motion on the floor. Nope. You nope. don't have any motion on the floor. Oh, moment. we had a motion and a second. No. Discussion. No, we didn't make that. We just asked questions. I thought you made a motion and we found out with the issue we couldn't do it. No. I think we need to take it, vote this off. We made the motion and and decided to table the ESSER two grants to, for discussion at the work session. Right. As he just said, we can make a motion to reconsider the motion to table the ESSER two grants to approve the math summer intervention and summer workbooks for this fiscal impact of $45,249.97 budget source ESSER II grant. But that we can do. Okay, but that, that, that there's, uh, to my that knowledge, was a motion. there's been a motion and a second to do that. And, and, and since we froze the ESSER II, we're gonna have to vote on this one, then we can re reconsider a new one. I just, I just, did I not make the motion? I just made the motion. You were amending your motion? I'm not amending anything, I'm making, it's called a reconsideration of a previous motion. Okay. So I am making the motion to reconsider the previous motion to table the ESSER two grants to allow the acceptance of the math summer intervention, to um, allow for the purchase of the math summer intervention and summer school workbooks, fiscal impact dollar amount of $45,249.97 from the budget source of the ESSER two grant. But otherwise table the rest, Ms. But otherwise tabling the rest of the ESSER two grants. Okay, I have a motion, I have a second? Second. second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. ayes have a drive vote. Thank you. Thank you very I'm much. I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> Me too, I, I apologize. I, 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 I didn't see forward and I apologize. I should have done that. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, after that discussion, we have two more coming up to us, but they both have ESSER two funding. I am presenting it. Uh, I don't want to waste your time. Can I ask a question? 
Is, is time of the essence on either one of these? Can we? Can, I can wait till the nineteenth. We can wait till the nineteenth on both of them. So I make a motion, sir, for both of them. Are you? Uh, yes. To table the Chesapeake speech and amend the contract for the Soylent for till the May nineteenth work session. Second. Okay. And a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Five out. We're going to table those two till, and we'll put them on the agenda for May the nineteenth. Thank you, Ms. Smith. See you then. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 8-08, Donations Mid-Shore Community Foundation. Good evening. Bring uh, before you tonight for approval of a donation made to Queen Anne's County Public Schools. We are in receipt of a donation from Mid-Shore Community Foundation for our food service department to support efforts to ensure students receive adequate food during COVID interruptions. This funding was from their COVID-19 response fund. So Midshore Community Foundation is donating this money to us Correct. to cover funds for... Right, it's my understanding in talking with others is that they have this COVID-19 response fund, Caroline County uh, sent in a grant for application for this and they funded all five counties for the twenty. Awesome. Nice. Wow. So they just gave that, they had escrow money so it's going back into the school for, for that. And the goal is to, uh, or the thought would be to meet with the food service department, identify the needs, prioritize them to see where this funding can be uh, used for since it's and that's, restricted. That would, be, that would be direction of our staff to do that, to see where it should be used. But, uh, the food service staff, right. yes. Sounds like it's getting easier, gang. Mm -hmm. I have a motion. Motion to approve the acceptance of the uh, Midshore Community Foundation twenty thousand uh, dollar donation. Thank you. Second. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor say by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Ayes have it five zero. Oh. Thank you. Thank the next you. item we bring before you is the expenditure reports for a period ending April. You can see all the categories are in positive available balance with the year ending at spent at 86.2%. And I know we have major bills or other bills coming in through the end of the year. In another two or three weeks by 1st of June, probably have it pretty solid where we're going to be at the end of the year. Right. Any questions by the board? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Towers. The, the second, the expenditure purport, the full one, could I ask? I, I apologize. Um, subtitle, sub number one, 8,000 transfers, 10,000. Uh, for e ESMIC. Uh, thank you. That was the only line that was at 100%. Yes. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, Mr. Tolley. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Kane, members of the board. Um, for the record, my name is Adam Talley. I'm the supervisor of CTE and social studies, and I am here before you this evening to ask for approval uh, for purchase and adoption of two textbooks, one for world history and one for uh, AP world history. These are just going out for Actually, review. yeah, for review. Three, for, for, yes, first read, yes. Mm -hmm. So we don't need approval or anything tonight, right? Just no, this information. Is just the first read. Right. 
I, I didn't take a look at the textbook. Um, I appreciate you you put it down there. Absolutely. Sure. Um, I did go online, though, to the Sabas. I guess it's the same company as the summer math intervention stuff. Yes, it used to be uh, Pearson. They, they broke right. it off. So. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's pretty neat with the interactive licenses, you know, on the Internet. And, uh, and I looked at a couple different chapters, was able to do that. And uh, it, it's pretty impressive. So it is. We we have been very impressed, and you know we put this out to my uh, high school team for review for um, for for both textbooks, and uh, they do a thorough review. And you know we look at all all the factors, um, you know, including cost, length of the contract as well. And um, you know this the, the books that we are currently using are 14 years old, mm -hmm. and so with these these new textbooks, and, and we did look at um, we did look at two other companies, two other major companies, and this uh, aside from the the, you know the material that's in there and just the outstanding resource they are the newest copyrights um, above the other textbook companies so um, the one textbook for world history um, if we were able to purchase is an eight-year license so um, we, that would put us all the way to it's a 2022 copyright so that would put us all the way into uh, 2030 and even after that time after um, uh, that eight years so the resource was still only be eight years old versus 14 which is you know what we're doing now so it, it really is a benefit and I saw in there that the licenses for the um, interactive part of the internet, um, one was for eight years and one was for seven years, but I thought they were in the same textbook. So it is the same textbook. So at the um, at the last minute, um, which was Monday, the textbook representative contacted me and um, apologized and said that there is also, I didn't put this forward, there is also an eight-year option. Um, and the, so we, we initially had, you know, I had put in there a request for the seven year, which was around 36,000. The eight year option was only $1,900 more um, to go for an extra year. And when, when they do it in, you know, up front like that as a as a bundle, it's, it's cheaper than after ending seven years, it wouldn't be $2,000 to add on the eighth year. They, it's cheaper to do it up front. So um, for the cost to, you know, to add an extra year on for $1,900 is, is really a great bargain. So that, that was the, so the seven year was the initial, but then the last minute that was in there. But it's, you know, even though it is a change, I think it's definitely, it would be a worthwhile change if we you know, move forward with this. Sure. Mr. Tully, right. I have a question. So if we're sending this out for first review for public comment. I mean, second, so it means July, we could possibly be, will that be enough time for the next school year to purchase these books? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And what grade levels are these aimed at? So world history um, is, is typically uh, 11th grade and then AP is, is either 11th or 12th grade. And they have also, um, and of course with AP, they follow the college board um, you know, syllabus and their curriculum with world history. Um, this book is already done, this company has already done in alignment with the MSDE world history framework. So it's it's all done. So so the amount of time, uh, you know, Mrs. Harper, you mentioned July. So it would cut down on the amount of time that, that teachers would actually need to prepare because that, that initial um, alignment with the framework is already done. So they, they take the framework and they, they make an alignment with the textbook and what resources are there and, and the certain units and the pages and it's all done so it really it does uh, you know cut down on that for them right. Right. I flipped through the world civ book and that to me struck me as college level so that that will be your AP text the AP text is the uh, the author is uh, Stearns yes uh, may I make a motion to send out for pup first review? I don't think we need a motion. It's don't. not an action item. Oh, we don't have to make an act to send it out. Just it just goes. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Okay. Any other? Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you all you. very much. Thank you, Mr. Dollar. Good evening. You too. Okay. We have no transfer notices. Our next uh, work session will be May the 19th. We'll be adding a few things to that, which we didn't get through tonight. Uh, our next regular board meeting will be June the 2nd, and our final one of the year will be June the 16th. Do I have any other comments by the board or Dr. Kane for this evening? No. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Smith, I, to adjourn. I make a motion to reconvene an executive closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointed employees over whom this public body has jurisdiction, to consider matters that relate to negotiations, to consult with counsel, and to perform an administrative function. Second. Uh, motion is second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Good evening.